Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream, and this video is going to be over a few days. Uh, we got some bad weather outside, but I want to talk to you about how to effectively measure your tongue weight. I've been riding on a daydream. And that's very important, a lot of people overlook that. And basically what I'm going to do in this video is not only show you how to measure your tongue weight, uh, but I'm going to show you how to do it using a specific gauge. So what I'm finding out there is there's a lot of different models that look like this and there's different brand names that are attached to it. Uh, so if you see one that looks like this, just shoot for the best price because most likely it's the same. However, in this case, I went with the Sureline brand. And the only reason is, is because we actually have an address in California. They have a website and they have a phone number. You can actually get hold of someone. Now, I'm not sure on those other brands if somebody is relabeling these and Sureline's the manufacturer. Um, but I do see that there's a lot of people that are going with the Sureline, even though it might be a couple dollars more uh, than some of the other names that, again, are attached to it, like Reese. But uh, the Sureline brand here, you can see you can get in 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, or 5,000 pounds. Now, what this is designed to do is to set on a block or a jack. Uh, there's different ways to do it. I'll show you how I'm going to do it on mine and measure how much of the weight of the tongue of the trailer when the trailer is level and uh, all you know balanced out it's not on a hill nothing like that this is the measure how much tongue weight the ball of your truck or tow vehicle actually sees now you have three different choices of these gauges as far as the weight that they offer you got 1,000 pounds 2,000 pounds 5,000 pounds now in my case I could have went with the 1,000 pound for this trailer and the accuracy would probably be a little bit better on this and I'll tell you why. Um, ideally what you're wanting to do is make sure that the gauge uh, whenever it reads whatever tongue weight that you think your trailer approximately has, uh, the gauge should be in its halfway mark. So we'll talk about that a little bit more and why. But let's go ahead and open this up and take a look what it looks like and the components and see if there's any assembly or anything like that ah packaging peanuts i hate them look at that so it just basically comes in one bag and there's three major components and uh, there's only one of them that may need attached depending on how you use it but right now i can tell because again it's cold it's the winter in northeast ohio um, the device itself is very cold to the touch. It's heavy, it's all metal, and it's, it's very cold. Now, I know already by reading the instructions prior to buying this, that before you use this, you should have this at a steady temperature, and it should not be cool whatsoever. You should protect this from getting too cold and staying cold, and you sh definitely shouldn't be using it when it's cold. So whenever you're measuring and you may go outside, make sure that uh, you bring it from a nice warm house and store it in a warm area too. I wouldn't want to store this like in the back of my truck where it might get cold, um, you know, sitting over the winter, but maybe inside instead. This is one of those tools that are sensitive because the fluid that's inside, when it gets pressurized, has to move at a certain rate or actually expand at a certain way for the gauge to be accurate. There's a word of caution whenever you're getting it out of the package even. So definitely pay attention to this. Do not lift the scale by the piston. This is the piston assembly right here. This cup uh, that's threaded and then of course the attachment which is the actual piston that goes down into the body. And the reason is is because if you lift this, it's going to displace that fluid. You possibly could lift this and pull this thing completely out. The other thing is, is it says you play squarely under load for accurate reading, which makes sense. I mean, even the slightest uh, of an angle, if you get this at, if it's exerting force downward, it's not pushing straight down. And it needs to push straight down so the piston reads correctly. So as far as an unloaded trailer, like in our case, I weigh 4,200 unloaded and it weighs 6,300 fully loaded. So I should have bought one of these for that trailer specifically that was a thousand. It should have been a thousand pound. But again, knowing that I'm going to get into a heavier trailer down the road, I went ahead and opted for the bigger one. Now I know I'm going to sacrifice some accuracy and let me tell you why 
all this is important to know which gauge to buy. Gauges don't always read real well at their extremes, on their lowest extreme and their highest extreme. They still read and they're pretty accurate uh, overall, but they're not going to be as accurate as this. I mean, if I was to find out that I had a tongue weight on an RV that was right around 900 pounds, this thing would be extremely accurate. I mean, within it says within 50 pounds. I would think it would probably be closer to about 15 pounds. But uh, again, I didn't opt for that. So I'm just going to basically take it with a grain of salt that whenever I get into this range over here, that there's going to be a greater inaccuracy. Now, the other thing you should do whenever you use this is not let a load slam on it. Don't let your trailer land on it. Just make sure there's no shocks to the system because this is a, a you know a precision instrument even though it looks and feels pretty beefy it's precision and you don't want to drop it you don't want to bang it around that's why it's so important you know as far as the temperature to make sure you get the temperature right so whenever you're out measuring you may want to unload it and load it a few times basically put the trailer down let it back up you know lift it up let it back down lift it up or if you have this on a jack or something like that jack this up lift the RV let it come down do that a few times gently um, to let everything work, all the fluid to move, make sure there's nothing sticky in here. And um, at that point, this will uh, settle and give you a good reading. Each time, write down your reading and see you know, how it changes. So that's basically what it looks like overall. Let's go ahead and go outside. Of course, we're gonna do this a different day, but you're gonna see this instantly. And uh, we'll see what our trailer weighs. So it finally got decent weather out so we can go ahead and run this tongue scale and see what it's like. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that your RV's level. And I know that this bubble is accurate as I adjusted it whenever I installed it. The other thing you want to do is take your stabilizer jacks and raise them. You don't want them to be down in the front or the back because that's going to change whenever you're raising up and down your tongue jack. Of course, I had to install my batteries so the tongue jack would operate up and down because we are getting into spring finally. And once you're at level, you're wanting to check the height and see how it looks compared to the ball. And it looks pretty good. I could probably add another board in there, another thin board. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I've got a block and I've got some... Uh, couple of treated boards just to give me the height that I need. Now whenever you're positioning this you want this to be as center as you can underneath the ball or where the ball would go. You want the dome top of this piston extension to go up inside and hit that ball socket perfect. So we're, we're pretty close there. I did add another board. The RV is definitely level at this point or real close to being level. And uh, this is pretty well centered. Let's make sure it's centered that way. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So we're at 400 now. What I wanted to do, I'm gonna try to set up the camera. And the reason that I've been even considering my tongue weight is because of the way things get loaded in the RV and the difference that it makes. So let me show you the inside of my RV if you haven't seen that. And we're gonna talk about weight placement and we're gonna see how it affects the tongue weight. Okay, as you can guess, it's a very small RV and we still have it kind of winterized, so there's a lot of stuff out that shouldn't be. I've got the furnace running in here and we're getting a little bit warm. Underneath this jackknife couch here is a 50 gallon water tank. On these older RVs, they put a lot of the water supply, the fresh water supply, inside the RV. Uh, of course, that's changed now on the newer RVs and they put it down below. What I have to contend with is that whenever I do add water to the RV, um, it's going to add tongue weight. You can guess that 50 gallons is going to add about 400 pounds. Now, I was contemplating moving this couch to the front of the RV and seeing how that affected tongue weight when I moved the water tank to the front of the RV also. But what we're going to do is we're going to watch the gauge and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to stand at the front of the RV as far forward as I possibly can because the further forward I stand the more the weight's going to show up on that scale and we're going to see what 250 pounds that's me my big butt <laughs> is going to do 
to that tongue weight. And then as I move around inside the RV, we can get an idea of how that tongue weight gets affected. Okay, so I know this isn't ideal, but it's gonna have to do, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully this thing don't fall over whenever I'm jumping in and out of the RV. And again, the other thing to be mindful of with this scale is not to jar it, not to streak it. So I'm not gonna go in and literally jump up and down because each one of those jolts uh, would cause a problem. Now, you can see as the fluid has been getting warmed even more than it already was, that the weight now has changed a little bit and the tongue weight actually reads 450 pounds. That's, again, pretty accurate. I think that the, you know, the RV being that it weighs 4,300 pounds empty, and I do have a few things in there uh, that 10% uh, of 4,300 pounds would be, you know, 430 pounds. So we're, we're pretty close. It's just a, a shade under or right at 450. And again, this scale has kind of a plus or minus of 50 pounds. It, it's pretty close, but let's go ahead. I'm going to walk up the steps, which is going to make this gauge read more. And then I'm going to walk to the front of the RV as far as I can. I'll move some stuff out of the way and we'll see what that does to the tongue weight. So that's the first measurement. All right, so you see how that weight jumped up. Now, the other thing to notice is the gauge, even though I'm not in there any longer, has continued to stay in uh, about the 500 pound range. So what I'm gonna do is uh, back this off. Go ahead and give it a second to settle down inside, you know, the fluid. And then I'm gonna lower it back down again. All right, so you can see we're right back to that 450 pound mark. Now what I'm gonna do is walk into the back of the RV. I'm going to uh, unlock the back door. I'm going to enter through the back. And uh, again, go t as far as the back that I can, which isn't very far. I mean, I could sit on the bed. That would probably be the furthest. If I sat on the tailgate, which we'll do that, um, when I say tailgate, I have a uh, cargo carrier back there. We may do that to see how that affects it too, but let's go ahead and uh, just get a measurement. And again, my next measurement is gonna be me in the back of the RV standing. So now I'm going to go ahead and again reset the jack and the scale. All right, so I've got the jack set back down on the scale. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take and put down my cargo carrier and sit on my cargo carrier to represent what it would be like to carry 250 pounds on the back of the RV and how it affects the tongue weight. So let me do that. The next measurement we get is going to be me sitting on that cargo carrier. So now there's one other way that you can use this scale that you don't have to do what I'm doing here with all these blocks of wood. Actually, there's two different ways. Um, you don't have to use all these blocks, and if you don't have an electric jack on your RV, um, you can use a floor jack and set this scale in the cup of the floor jack and jack it up until you lift the front of the RV. Um, 
and then at that point you know that you have all the tongue weight that's there but you can also measure one final way and that is underneath the jack pad itself so let's go ahead and set that up I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll do some calculations and we'll see how accurate the gauge reads between the two okay so now the jack I had to remove the uh, ball adapter and uh, be aware you're gonna have grease all over it we're going to uh, try to get this thing set up to where we can get some decent readings but my jack pad is awful large and that is pretty much centered all right let's go ahead and read this Now, like I said, uh, the gauge, I'm going to let it settle so I get a decent reading because it does change a little bit. If you want to wiggle your RV just slightly uh, to make sure that all the weight is centered, uh, nothing is, has changed. And it looks like that we're close to uh, 475 pounds. Each one of those small hash marks are 50 pounds. So, 475 when measured directly underneath the jack pad. Let's go ahead and take this thing out and do some math now. All right, so I went ahead and did the math. And like I mentioned before, the distance between your ball mount and your jack pad where it lifts at is pretty much standard between almost all RVs. And as far as the measurement I get at the ball, closer to probably the 450 mark, it was always just above 400 and closer to that first hash. So I'm gonna say, about that and it makes sense because the measurement at the jack pad being 475 if you take and multiply that times 0.95 that will give you 451 pounds so again that's really close I mean the gauge is is pretty darn close I haven't found anything that tells me that it's way off now I've done readings and then I took weight off and did a reading then took weight off and I noticed that Whenever you get the weight of the trailer down on the uh, scale, just kind of wiggle the trailer just a little bit. Not a lot, because that piston, you know, is wanting to move inside there, and you don't want to wear anything out in there prematurely. You're wanting the pressure, uh, the downforce, to be equal and straight down so that jack is accurate. I'm glad that the, the pad weight, the jack pad weight, when I put the scale under there, weighed about 5% more than it did at the ball. Uh, that's accurate. That's exactly what I expected. So uh, very, very good. I, I'm happy with that. I found it was kind of interesting and almost uh, eye-opening how dangerous some of the suggestions that I've received on my own RV channel, uh, the channel you're watching this on, uh, was from people where they say, hey, just put it on a rack on the back of your RV. Well, I knew that there was some consequences to it, and I'm going to have to stress that probably more to my uh, normal subscribers in another video. Uh, how much weight it took off the trailer. That tongue weight, whenever I sat back on the cargo tray, I mean, 250 pounds, my generator only weighs 110 pounds. Uh, but the cargo carrier itself added some weight too. But you could see if you just overloaded a little bit. Um, how fast that weight takes away from the tongue weight. That's incredible. Uh, even just me getting in the back of the RV. I mean, we went from having 450 pounds. I got that number all the way up to 600 pounds. It seems like a lot, but I guess that is probably pretty accurate. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is whenever I got in the back of the RV, just on the bed, um, putting 250 pounds in the bed to the rear of the RV, uh, changed my tongue weight uh, to where it was down to uh, 375 pounds, somewhere in that range. Um, that's that's eye-opening to know that you can balance your load and make a big difference there. Uh, and, of course, 10% of the overall trailer weight, 10 to 15%, needs to be on that tongue so it goes down the road correctly. Uh, I'm going to put a... a quick clip of another video here. It's basically uh, going to show you what it does to your RV or your trailer whenever you change where you place the weight.
So you can see by that clip that just that movement of that weight from the front to the rear, uh, how much it causes a fishtail action. That's something you don't want. So if you ever have to err in as far as loading a vehicle and you, you don't have a way to actually center the weight, um, you know, towards the front is always a little bit better than towards the back. Uh, that That's definitely an issue going that route. So what do I think overall? I'm very happy that I bought this. I wasn't 100% sold. I knew I had a bathroom scale that is literally sitting right in my office here <laughs> off to the corner because I was going to take that outside and actually do measurements on, uh, you know, using a bathroom scale to get my tongue weight but I knew that I wanted to make all kinds of changes and see how that affected things and the nice thing about it is I don't have to set up that whole board contraption thing every single time I just grab this out of the box I'll put this underneath the tongue and uh, I'll get a measurement and as I make changes inside the RV um, I'll get measurements each time so very very happy about this I've seen a lot of positive reviews I had some people that I read their reviews and they said that they're their measurements were all over the place well as I showed you if you let it settle and this is warm and you do your measurements over and over again maybe four or five times it's so easy to use why wouldn't you do that go ahead and raise it and lower it raise it and lower it and, and get an average of what you think and see what it says like I said 450 was about the right number for me every single time so as far as their results um, I'm gonna just tell you hey go off whatever you feel comfortable with but I'm telling you, as a reviewer of a lot of products, uh, this is a good one. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description for this, like I always do. Uh, this is because I have an Amazon Affiliates account, and it does take advantage of um, being able to get the exact same part that I'm talking about from the exact same source. So whenever you click that link, you're going to get the exact same you know, scale. Uh, in this case, it's a 2,000-pound scale. Now, once you're in there, if you decide you want to get a 1,000-pound, uh, go ahead and, and find that number for it. It'll give you some choices. Or if you've got something much bigger, uh, you know, it'll go up to 5,000 pounds. They also make these to where you can get an adapter and it'll allow you to measure your fifth wheel tongue weight. Um, you know, on the bigger RVs, the one thing to take away from that is you've got more room to make error. Uh, 250 pounds on the tongue of a trailer that only weighs 6,300 pounds fully loaded. Uh, that would be a big difference. Make your tongue weight to where it pulls 200 pounds off of the tongue or almost 200 pounds off of the tongue. Uh, that's huge. That's huge. So uh, something to be considerate of. Again, the link is down below. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope I chopped it down far enough for you. And as always, guys, I hope to see you out there. Bye.